Hey folks, good day to you. VM Explorer here, and in this quick NAS video, what we're going to be covering is how to set up your own uh, Ubuntu iPerf 3 uh, container. And we're working with the Lock Store 10 here today, and there's a couple things you're going to need to get actually get started. The first thing is outside of the Lock Store. Right. You're going to want to set up your own Docker Hub account if you haven't yet. Just go to hub.docker.com, fill out the form to sign up as a new account and get it going. I created one called VM Explorer. And as you can see here, I've already uploaded a few uh, images into my repository. One being Ubuntu AMD iPerf 3 and the other being the same with ARM. Now, if we look at the different NASs that I've been working with, the Drive Store Pro 2, the Synology 1621 Plus, and this Locker Store 10, they all have different processors. <laughs> so by trying to create a unique repository, I've had to kind of make a special one for each processor type. I'm sure as my Docker skills advanced, I'll figure out how to combine them or something. But for now, this works. I've already made these two images and in this video I want to show you how I went through and all the steps I did to actually create them. It's a little bit longer and this is kind of an add-on to the uh, 10 gigabit home NAS lab part 7 where I actually do network testing. These are the steps to actually create the container. So again, go to Docker Hub, get your account set up, get it ready to go. Remember your username and password, very important. <laughs> Go back to lock store. Now there's a couple things you're gonna wanna add. If we go into App Central, right? Let's just look at installed for right now. The apps I installed were Docker CE, uh, Portainer CE, and Shell in a Box. Uh, those are the three tools that we use. Docker CE adds all the Docker commands uh, to the Lock Store 10. Shell in the box enables us shell access so that we can actually execute those commands. And then Portainer is a graphical representation of a Docker's instance. You can see images and repositories, all types of stuff. I feel that comes in handy if you're just learning Docker and kind of want a, a really quick way to find what you're looking for. And occasionally it comes in handy. So I'd like to have that tool my personal opinion. Now you're probably saying, hey, wait wait a second. Um, Asus Store for the Lock Store 10 already has iPerf 3. Why are you making a container, right? So if we go in there, you're, you're absolutely right. If we go and take a look and we see iPerf, sure enough, there it is. And it's a fully functional iPerf 3 um, application. You install it, it puts it into uh, the OS, you go to shell in the box, you can type in iperf3, boom, it's there, right? But what I wanted to try to do is to make sure that all devices, whether they be uh, the Lock Store or the Drive Pro or the um, Synology, that they're all doing the same thing when I did my testing. Each one had Ubuntu, each one had iperf3 and the tools, so I want to make sure that this one is exactly the same. All right, so getting back to it. After we get those installed, uh, you might want to go into Portainer next. It's completely optional and up to you. All right? In Portainer, the first time you come in, it's going to ask you to put in a new username and password for Portainer. Go ahead and do that. Uh, then it's going to ask you which environment do you want, like Docker, and there's a bunch of other ones. I just chose Docker. I put in my credentials for Docker, and hey, what do you know? I'm able to access everything, and that's showing up right here. Now, if you had other... Um, uh, other uh, accounts with different providers, they would show up here as well, whether it be other Docker providers or whatever you're doing. Whatever environments they let you set up would all show here. For me, we're just doing a Docker environment, super easy. So just by going in here, real quick, I get a nice little dashboard. I can see my containers, Portainer, which is what we're working on right now is running, right? I can go back to the dashboard. I can check out my images. Right. I can see I have a couple images here right now. Ubuntu's here is already brought down, which is nice. Portainer and then some unused one, which we'll figure out later at some point. <laughs> uh, so it's just really handy. I, I like it because I can go through here and do a few things. 
I can get in here and get shell access for this per this particular uh, container that's running if I need to, right? I can come in here and look at its details. Maybe I want to adjust something on it. Maybe it's networking or something like that. It's just super handy. A lot of quick information, really fast. And I feel once you get used to it, you can kind of find your way around. But it's nothing that you can't do in Docker command line. And that's where most of our commands and things that are going on today are going to happen. We're probably going to look in here uh, in Portainer and see some of the running things, but that would be about it. Okay. So let's go back to shell in a box. Okay, and we're gonna log in. Let's zoom in just a little bit here. Make it a little easier to read. There we go. Okay, so let's just make sure Docker is ready to go. We're gonna do docker-v and it's installed. Now let's do docker images and we can see the images that are available to us locally. And then docker ps, okay. And we can see that the portainer one is currently running. Now, what we need to do now is we actually got to get the um, Ubuntu image. We're going to create a new one, right? A new container based on the Ubuntu repository that we've downloaded. Now, the, where I got this from was actually the Docker image initially. And I went here to Ubuntu. Okay. I found the official image for it. And when I click on it, it tells me how to get it. Docker pull Ubuntu. And if I didn't have that in my local repository, I could issue that command and it would pull it down and actually put it there. And then I can make deployments or whatever I want to do with it. Okay. But we already have it. We're good to go. So now what we need to do is just run it. It'll make a new instance. So Docker run dash IT, which is for terminal. The repository name. Now we could put as tag and there might have different tags like latest, older, version numbers, things of that nature. If you don't put a colon and then the tag name, whatever it is, it's going to assume latest. So we're leaving that for there now, bash and enter. And what you'll notice is the uh, uh, prompt has changed to root and we're now actually in a Linux, a Linux, very scaled down Linux, but still Linux uh, command prompt. So I'm going to jump back over to Portainer and take a quick look. Okay, let's refresh it. And sure enough, there it is. Now, it's not called Ubuntu. They gave it a random name. But if you notice, the image it was pulled from was called Ubuntu. This is the one we're going to start modifying. In fact, we're going to do that right now. For the home lab testing, there's certain things I needed. Most of those were networking tools. So I'm going to go ahead and start updating our paste from browser. <laughs> There it is. Let's start this going. And then I have a bunch of other networking tools that I'm going to put on as well. Now, you might be asking, why am I putting so many network tools into this uh, kind of scaled down Ubuntu? And that's because it, it doesn't have them for one. <laughs> and uh, two, I like to have, this is a diagnostic tool, kind of Linux version that I wanted. So that I had like ping and route and, you know, all those types of great commands that come along uh, with IP tools. So I'm getting those all installed. Yeah, it's going to make the image a little fat and I'm okay with that. It's just for testing, right? Okay. All right, so one other thing you're gonna to need to uh, have as well is of course, this uh, lock store 10 actually uh, is connected to the internet. So that's how I'm able to pull all these items uh, down. All right, let's get our next command in. Okay, a couple more to go. And you won't hurt my feelings if you stick the video on two times if you want, because <laughs> this is pretty lengthy here. All these commands will be in the comments. So if you want to build your own, you definitely can. You could also just pull from my store. They're all public. Um, so you're able to pull from there as well. And ping. And our last one, which is iperf3. So once iperf3 is downloaded and installed, we're just gonna do a couple quick ping tests here and make sure everything's uh, operational. Okay, so let's just do iperf3 
three dash V for version. Okay, there it is. Okay, let's do just a ping. And I don't know, let's ping. Should work because we've been pulling everything else down, but now ping is available to us as well. So now we've got this particular uh, Linux instance set up. Here's the catch, okay? You don't necessarily want to type exit, because uh, if you do, you might forget which image you're working on. And that's where you got to make sure you understand the image name. Now, we went back here earlier and we knew it was uh, King Gungli, it looks like here. <laughs> Pretty funny name, right? And the Ubuntu image, it's currently running. Once we exit, this is going to stop. This is going to be what we need to reference to commit those changes and create our own image. Once we have that image, then we can push that image up to our repository. Now, pushing up to a repository is totally optional. You don't have to do it. In fact, you can keep it local all you want. I push it to the repository in case I want to grab it later. It's a nice backup. It's free. Maybe somebody else wants it to use it. It's there for them. So those are the steps we're going to get what we could do. Okay, so now we're going to type exit. Okay, and we can do Docker uh, PS. Now we're going to do L for latest, and this will show us the latest one. And there it is. Okay. Remember that name. Okay. So in there it's it's stopped right now. It's not running. What we need to do is commit those changes. All right. So here's the command we're going to do. It's just simply docker commit. Okay. Now we have to give the actual name out. Okay. We know the image name. I'm going to use the container ID. Okay. And copying it. Go back over here and paste it in. Okay. And then the local name. So in this case, I'm going to call it VM Explorer. Okay. Slash Ubuntu. Dash Atom, because it's an Atom processor, and iperf3. Enter. So now what it just did was it took that uh, stopped container and it copied it into or committed it into an image file called VM, tagged VM Explorer Ubuntu Atom iperf3. So let's go look at Portainer right now. Okay. We'll look at our images and scroll down. And sure enough, there it is with its tag. All right. So now we've got this whenever we want. We can run this if we want to, we can do whatever we want with it. But in this case, the next step, what I want to do is I want to actually push it up to my repository so that I can download it later. Okay. So now it's simply is just doing the push command. All right. So let's get a list real quick, just so I have the name in front of me. Okay, there it is at the top. Docker, push, right? <laughs> and exactly the same name. Oops, sorry. A little typo there. That's what I meant to do, sorry. And there it goes. Resource to request denied. All right, take two. Now I have found with Docker that sometimes you need to put the sudo in front of it for it to actually operate. Let's see if that's gonna work. There it goes. So that is definitely something I've seen uh, working with Docker is sometimes it needs that elevated privilege to do certain things. And by putting sudo in front of it, uh, it clears that up. And as you can see right now, it's working like a champ. Let's let this finish up. Should be done here in about two seconds. Uh, come on, almost there. And we'll go refresh our uh, Docker instance and make sure it's done. All right, so up it goes. Now, if I go and look at my profile here, 
I can now see that there's the Atom iPerf available. It's public. Folks can download it. All they got to do is do the uh, basically uh, Docker pool VM Explorer slash Ubuntu Atom iPerf3 and away you go. And folks, uh, it's just that easy. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video, learned a few Docker commands. You know, for me personally, being an admin, trying to find a use for Docker has been hard because I don't do a lot of programming or code, uh, but can't container uh, development, I should say, right? But this was kind of fun because I could pull down the tools, make a quick little um, container to do some network testing and then go from there. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please hit subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them alone. Below. <laughs> Good day.